Hello everybody, welcome from me, Jack. I'm from Stefano, on this beautiful Fiat 500. Have you ever watched some of those TV programs where they do car makeovers? And have you wondered how good those restorations really are? Well, Stefano was actually fully restored four or five years ago for the TV program, For the Love of Cars. We're celebrating the magical world of motoring in miniature, crowning it all as our rescue. The premise for these shows is that they usually get by something which is quite ropey, they fix it up and then it's either, I don't know if they give it back to the family or they sell them on or, or whatever. The thing they all have in common is they buy something which, is, which looks pretty bad and then by the end of the show it always seems like the car is absolutely sorted and perfect. Oh wow. Are you sure it's the same car? <laughs> it's the same car. I've often wondered how good these TV restorations really are and how much of it is just TV trickery. He was in a really sorry strait when they found him. There was plenty of rust, including structural rust, and the engine wasn't even in the car. It is actually one of the better TV programs out there, and it looks like they do a good job of restoring the cars from what I've seen so far. But what will the reality of it be four years after it was done? Will it stack up? I'm going to take Stefano for a drive and see how the mechanical side of things feels on the road. And then we'll come back and have a much more in-depth look at the various panels, how everything was done in terms of the restoration itself. The engine purrs away quite nicely, really. I mean, these are extraordinarily slow cars by any standards, um, but it does feel pretty good. You can see how slowly I'm closing in on the cyclist in front of me. Probably slower than any other car I've ever been in. But these are actually an awful lot of fun to drive. You would be surprised if you drove one. They just have a feel to them and they're, they're just fun in the twisties. When I brought my one back from Italy as well a few years ago that I then sold on. Over the mountain passes, I went over Mont Blanc to get over and it was just so much fun. Now straight away with Stefano, I can say all is not right with the steering. There's a couple of things. First of all, you can do that and he hardly changes direction. So that steering box definitely needs looking at. The other thing I've noticed, even though this is not the, a synchro box, um, if you, it's not too bad actually, but you kind of have to rev match. If you don't rev match, um, but I think this is a common feature with all these cars, it clunks in like it did there. It was actually so much worse when Rooksy got it back. So this belongs to my neighbor. She firstly got a, a Lego one of these and then decided that she wanted the real, real thing. So she bought it a few weeks ago. And when she got it back, first of all, the clutch was completely out of adjustment. So it would just crunch into every single gear, no matter what you did. But secondly, it was all over the place. She just couldn't keep it straight. And she collected this all the way from Essex. So I think it took her five hours to get it back. And to be honest with you, I don't know how she drove it. It was absolutely dreadful. But we can't really blame uh, the guys on Ant Anstead and, and so on, on for the love of cars for that, because I think it's just something that was probably okay at the beginning, um, but maybe has gone out of adjustment since, and maybe it just hasn't had any maintenance. The engine purrs really nicely, it feels really smooth, dreadfully slow, but that's just what they are all like. One of the things that I noticed when I first drove it is that the controls just don't feel right. Um, the clutch is really sticky. As mentioned, it was totally out of adjustment before as well, at least now it's drivable. But the clutch is sticky, the accelerator, it's not too bad, but the carpet wasn't cut out or stuck down properly when I got it. So a couple of times for Rooksy, it got stuck, which is quite dangerous. The accelerator got stuck down. So I've sorted that out for her. It does drive quite sweetly. It feels pretty solid for one of these. And it, it, it's really not, not bad. There's a big rattle when you go at anything above sort of 40 miles an hour. Um, but that is, it's an engine related rattle. So it's something to do with a bit of tinware or something like that that's loose.
there's just something about the personality of these things. They are pretty unbeatable in that respect. So the test run showed a couple of issues with the steering and the clutch. The clutch has already been adjusted once from when Rooksy brought it back, but I think it needs uh, adjusting again. I do realise that with a non-synchro, when you're changing down, you always need to double declutch and ideally rev match. But with this, even when you're changing up, it's not the smoothest shift. And I do suspect that taking the biting point a bit further up might help that. So I might have a quick go at that while I'm underneath looking at the rest of the car because it won't take very long. Um, the other rattle that I found was actually coming from the gear stick. So again, might have a quick look at that in a minute and see if we can find an easy solution to that because that is most annoying. But apart from that, it drives really well. There's no clunks, there's no noises, everything's pretty tight. And I suspect that everything on this car is pretty new. It looked like the restoration was really quite, quite thorough that they did. First though, let's take a quick look at the bodywork. And at first glance, it is super nice and shiny. And indeed, I think it looks lovely in that azure blue. However, there are a couple of areas that are a slight concern here, if you can see. I'm not sure if that is rust or maybe paint reaction. Um, now I did get it wrong originally. This car was actually done six years ago, not four years ago. So it has been, you know, it's been six years that, that it was restored, but all the same, it's been kept in a garage and I wouldn't expect to see any rust on it. Um, plus, practically the whole lower half of the car has been replaced from what I could see on the, on the video. So very strange that we're getting a little bit of uh, signs of rust popping up at this stage. The other one, which is probably slightly worse, is here. And I'm pretty sure that that is definitely rust. Now, both of these, once you grind them down, they're not going to be, they're not going to be particularly bad, but I would just, <laughs> you know, in a car that had a complete restoration six years ago, I'd rather not have seen that really. There's another little sign maybe there, tiny little sign that something could be bubbling. Um, Apart from that though, it is really, really good. You can see on the program that the sills were quite bad and I am sure that they had to completely replace them and indeed they look really, really good as one would expect. The, the rest of the car underneath as well is super, super clean. Um, there's I mean, it's mainly a few sort of mud splashes, but there's no sign of rust. Um, maybe a tiny bit of very surface rust in some areas, but hardly anything. And everything looks pretty much new. So that is just, that is lovely to see a car that is so clean. So bonus points for the boys there. I think they've done really well uh, with the car structurally. It's all really, really nice. Now there are a couple of drips coming from that steering box, um, which again, with it being so new, I'd prefer not to see that, but um, that's, again, I think it needs to be sort of tightened up and rebuilt anyway. The engine looks great and largely new. Uh, that lets it down slightly, but that's just sort of normal corrosion. Some of these parts are pretty cheap, I think, for 500s, nothing's that expensive because it's a cheap car. Um, but the alternator looks new, everything looks new. Now they mentioned in the video that, um, it's the starter as well. They mentioned in the video that the engine was pretty much completely rebuilt. They reused the bottom end, but they put in new valves and so on. So it should be running really well and it is. The one thing that lets it down slightly is that something's going on with the car because you can't adjust the idle properly past a certain bit. So I think there's probably an air leak there, um, but it's, it's nothing serious and it runs really smoothly and really nicely and everything is super nice and super straight in there. So lovely little car. The interior is also really rather well done, um, but essentially this is the correct sort of vinyl that they would have had in the day. I'm not sure what the color scheme of this car is, but it goes well with the color scheme it has now. This isn't the round speedo model, but the interior is really tidy and really nice. I suspect the rattle is coming from here, so I might just remove this panel quickly and just have a look if I can see 
what's going on there. This is the bit of carpet that hadn't been cut down or stuck down here. So what would happen is the pedal would push down, this would pop out and lock the accelerator down. In this particular case, it does look like, at least on For the Love of Cars, they did a good job. Uh, I'm really, I'd be really curious to see cars from other TV programs and see how they sort of square up to this. But, but on this, yes, there's a couple of things you wouldn't really like to see. The corrosion at this stage in the car's life after a makeover, when it's supposedly been garaged anyway, is a bit, is not great. Um, and obviously it needs a few bits of adjustment here and there. And I think that part of the issue as well is just that the parts that you can buy for these, they're just not the best quality. But overall, a pretty good job on this particular car. Thank you so much for, much for watching. If you're interested in seeing my own adventure when I brought the Fiat 500 over that I bought in Italy a few years ago, I'll put the link in the video description. Do please subscribe. Uh, do If you need to message me, Instagram is the best way. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you for the next one.